What's going on everybody? The original Mako back with another shark scale for you today. And we have a, a beautiful anime, 86, that I got done watching about a month ago now. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're throwing it back a little bit. We're almost caught up on these shark scale videos. But anyways, uh, we're going to be talking about 86. Probably going to be some spoilers. Going to try to avoid it as much as possible. But um, if you want to see me talk about you know, different anime shows live or voice your opinion live, check out the links down below. I stream like four to five times a week. We have a ton of fun over there, play a bunch of different games and chat about a bunch of different topics. So check that out. I'd really appreciate it. That being said, let's go ahead and talk about 86, shall we? And as per usual, we will be ranking it on uh, a few different items here. Uh, all of these rankings are out of 100, so we will start with characters, then talk about the story, the world, the music slash soundtrack, the animations, the overall enjoyment that I had, and then we will give it a total score, the average out of 100, and then place it on our list of shows here. So, 86. Uh, potentially a third season coming, hopefully a third season coming, a little bit of a blue ball ending. However, if it does end where it ended, it wouldn't be the most upsetting thing in the world. Um, 86. I guess let's start with the characters. Um, this entire show is the characters. You would watch this show for the characters. Uh, this is going to be the high point of this. Well, I guess there's going to be there's going to be two high points. This is going to be one of them. Um, getting attached to the characters, feeling for the characters, understanding the characters, learning about the characters. That is the fun of this show, and that's why 86, in my opinion, was so enjoyable to watch. It's the characters. You've got characters that you're rooting for. You've got people that you're pissed off at. You've got all of this different shit happening. All of these different characters that are introduced, some of them stay the whole time, some of them don't. And it's, it's, everything feels meaningful when you're learning about all these characters and, and like I said, just forming this attachment to them. And, um, I, I, there, there's, season two is is very interesting because there's this there's one character that you do not see for almost the entirety of season two, but it makes sense why for the most part, and and it 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 makes the end of season two so much more rewarding. Um, however, I do wish they would have spent a little more time on that character in season two and kind of understanding where. What was going on in that storyline? Because uh, there's kind of two different storylines going on in season two. So I, I do wish we would have seen a little bit more of that character and some of the development that that character makes. However, the characters are so well done and you, you form an attachment to them. It's easy to do. Definitely going to give them above a 90. Um, I think it's worth a 93. I probably would have chucked it up at a 95 if... Um, I'll, I'll knock it down another one. I probably would have chucked it up at a 95 if it wasn't for the, the gripe I have about season two and barely seeing one of the characters. But the characters are great and, and like I said, kind of the big selling point for this show is how good the characters are and how much you would get attached to them. So, moving on to the story. The story is interesting. However, it's a, it's, it's a story that is becoming very commonplace. Um, which which don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, I love this kind of story. It's a it's a post apocalyptic type of story where a certain group of people is being oppressed. It, it's very. If I b really went to the bare bones of it, it would be somewhat similar to like Attack on Titan or um, uh, Cabinary of the Iron Fortress. Any of these post apocalyptic shows. Um, and this is another one, and I think they tell a good story with it. Like I said, it's the same exact story of post-apocalyptic. A group of people is being oppressed. Somebody doesn't want them to be oppressed. Other people very much do want them to be oppressed. Um, it, it sort of takes it to a whole nother level uh, with with this group that is being oppressed in this show. However, um, the, 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 the big story is kind of, like I said, with the whole character thing, through the main character, the the two main characters, I guess, technically, are both 
both have very intriguing parts of their story. And they've got their own little storylines going on and they've got all of this backstory that you get with both of them and their motivation for doing what they do. And all of that is the more interesting part than the overarching main story of, uh uh-oh, post-apocalyptic, big robots are hitting us, uh, trying to kill all of us. We don't want big robots to kill us, so we kill them before they kill us kind of thing. So the overarching story is okay, but the character stories are very well done and sort of the more interesting part. Uh, because of that, I'm, I'm going to keep it around like an uh, an 80, I think. Uh, definitely above average because of the, the character part of it. However, the overarching story is just a standard... Um, sort of post-apocalyptic kind of, kind of deal. Not, uh, there are a couple of little twists and turns, but once again, that's more based off of the character learning new things about the character, uh, as opposed to learning new things about the world or, or what have you. Uh, speaking of which, we'll move on to the world. Um, it's, once again, it's, it's very Attack on Titan-esque with the world and the setting of this story. Uh, you've got, the the 85 segments of the country and then you've got that 86th segment where they push all of the oppressed people to and they all live on the outskirts and everybody else lives in the comfort of the interior of this area um the whole sort of uh world i guess or for lack of a better word the world that we see in the show is all at war there's, there's a couple of different countries that are sort of involved and, um, they do a good job of, of really showcasing sort of, you know, making you feel, uh, a lot for these, the oppressed characters. Uh, I think the world building is decent. Once again, it's nothing that's going to fucking bust your socks off. The robots that they have for the, the fighting system, it's very, it's very interesting, uh, um, the, the, with the whole robot approach and sort of how the robots work and and everything like that, but it's not something that's so exciting that it's going to make it a, a really great part of the show. Um, I will put it a little above average. I do think it's, it's you know, once again, you, they do a good job of building, explaining what the robots are, how they work, um, and sort of setting the scene to make you uh, get behind this group of oppressed people a little bit more and um they just do a a good job of of um setting up this generic type of world so i'll put it above average but it's not like a a crazy insane selling point like some other shows um see if i can find a good example of one Yu-Gi-Oh's world the fucking yeah no game no life everything is yeah okay those kind of things where there's a huge twist or a really cool setting or what have you. Anyway, uh, music slash soundtrack. I said when I was doing the characters, there was going to be another highlight of this show, and it is the soundtrack. The opening is good. The ending is good. The songs throughout, the, the, the soundtrack throughout the show while you're watching, during fight scenes, during emotional moments, it is very very top tier I mean there are only a couple of anime soundtracks that I would even put on a a remotely similar level Uh, one being Cyberpunk Headrunners I think that is the benchmark of soundtracks in a show two being potentially Black Clover just because Black Clover had so many good openings and endings but uh, had also some decent uh, 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 soundtrack during the show but 86 the opening and ending are fine, but it's really what you're going to hear during the show that is so, so remarkable for this show. So 86's soundtrack is going to get a fucking slapper from me at a 94. Uh, it, 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 it drives the emotion home during those scenes, and it, it some soundtracks don't really make a huge difference on the show. 86's soundtrack, I think, makes a major difference in the experience. Uh, so that's why I'm going to give it such a high score. Animation. The animation is fine. I will be honest. This is maybe one of my uh, bigger uh, disappointments with this show is the fight scene choreography and animation in general in fight scenes. For me, at least, and maybe I'm just, you know, 
big dumb brain here, uh, or dumb small brain, I guess. But it was very hard to follow, very, very chaotic. And it was almost like I, I could not tell what in the hell was going on half the time. Like, I understood in general what was happening, but it was hard to really appreciate much of the fights because I, it was just so chaotic and so camera angle switching every half of a second. Um, just really, really chaotic. And I think that's kind of the vibe they were going for, but it was it was a little too much for me. I wasn't a huge fan of how the, the fights were choreographed and there weren't too many splashes of, like, amazing uh, light shows or... Uh, animation brilliance, which, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, it's not Demon Slayer, right? You're not, it's a post-apocalyptic dark gray world. Uh, so there's not going to be a lot of flashes and pops of light, but it, it just was a little underwhelming uh, for me and sort of took away from the, the fights a little bit, which aren't, uh, not a super big part of the show, um, once again, the, the whole character's journey is the main part of the show you're there for, but it would have been nice to have that to, to, uh, be a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to give it a below average score here. Um, it's, I, I don't see bad choreography in fight scenes a lot, so it, it's going to go pretty low. Uh, go to a 64 for me. Um, overall enjoyment. I loved it. Once again, it took away from the fight scenes, but the fight scenes aren't really a huge major plot point where you need to be like, you have to know what's going on in all of them. So it's, it's less of a big deal. It didn't take away from my enjoyment too much of the overall show. Um, and since they did the characters so well, and since they did all of the other, they did everything so well, um, outside of that animation part. So I think the overall enjoyment is still going to be a Fairly high score here. Um, I'm going to give this probably an... Uh, I'll give it an 89, just under 90. I, I don't think I can quite go 90. It was a beautiful show. I hope there's a season three. It ends in a place where it would be okay to not have a season three. It would just be really nice if there was one, so we can kind of continue the story here and not get fully blue-balled. But they did a great job. And it's, it's emotional, you feel a lot, a lot of action, even if it's choreographed poorly, there's a lot of action. And, um, you know, a good classic post-apocalyptic story, if that's the kind of story that you enjoy. So, that's going to be our final rankings for this, so let's go ahead and add everything up and give it a total score out of um, 100 and see where this is going to end up on our list. It is going to be an 82.2 out of 100. Whoops. And I don't know exactly where that's going to put it, but let's go ahead and find out, shall we? 82.2 is going to land us a lot in the 70s. Um, right in between God Eater and Supposed Kid from the Last Dungeon Boonies uh, move to a starter town. So let's go ahead and slap it right here. Beautiful. And we will get rid of it down here and fix that. Um, okay. And there we have it, everybody. 86 up here uh, just about cracked the top 30, which is kind of hard to do considering the way I used to, uh, do rankings. But anyways, um, a great show. Once again, the animation does drag it down a bit, but, um, it didn't take away too much from an overall enjoyment perspective. Uh, and like I said, it was very action packed, just, just hard to follow occasionally in the action. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed listening. Um, as always, let me know your thoughts on 86 down below or any other shows you are currently watching. And if you want to talk about them live, you can check out that Twitch link down below as well. Anyways, thank you all for hanging out. I do appreciate it. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. I love each and every one of your faces, and I'll catch you all in the next video.